and then also I actually looked at what Dylan had done um, for, um, for like to be um, to be a brand ambassador for this deeply loved brand and it was um this really basic like glow up sort of dance which is uh, don't do glow up stuff right hi this is Flynn's arcade um welcome back to all my subscribers hello to anyone new who's watching this please can you like share and subscribe and now on with the video Flynn's arcade Hi, this is Flynn's Arcade, and this is my video about the makeup brands Urban Decay and the serious concerns I've got about the current direction of the way Urban Decay is going. Um, full disclaimer, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm an enthusiastic consumer, so you might think, why am I listening to this person? So I've got an expert opinion here, and so let's hear from Robert Welsh. Robert is a professional makeup artist and he's got over a million subscribers on YouTube, so he's definitely an authority on this subject. Now, I remember walking into a Covent Garden store, right? This was the one in Covent Garden in London, just off a side of, of a main kind of like square bit in the middle. And again, this was a time I was working for Mac. A lot of my life was taken up by the time I was, taken up sounds terrible, taken up by the time I was working for Mac. But listen, Mac people back then, Mac boys and girls back then, honestly, we thought we were the sh And it was like the thing, the goal to be a Mac girl, Mac boy, you know. They have the knowledge, they had the skills. We were basically like, super rude makeup professionals. <laughs> you know, it was different. It was fashion forward. It was like, you know, we're the weird ones. And then I remember walking into that Urban Decay store and I felt like such a little geek. I, I was like, hi, hi guys. The people that worked in there, they were so cool. Have you ever walked in front of like a group of people and fallen over in front of them and they laugh a little bit? It's that kind of feeling, walking into that store, but, um they make you buy something. And um, as you can see in Robert's video, the Urban Decay was like super cool. It was it was really edgy. Um, Cause obviously Robert was, um, you know, he was a Mac makeup artist, which is a very, um, you know, a, a well respected and aspirational job. And even him and his colleagues uh, felt very intimidated by going in the Covent Garden Urban Decay store. Um, when I was thinking about the appeal of Urban Decay when I was researching this video, I was trying to think of why why is why why is Urban Decay seen as so edgy and cool? Um, and as luck would have it, I um, was just watching old music videos on the TV, and I saw um, like Blondie were on, and I saw um, and I looked at Debbie Harry, and I thought that's she wasn't an influence or a brand ambassador for Urban Decay, but she would have been if, it, if the timelines had been different because when you think about Debbie Harry she was obviously a very conventionally beautiful woman who's worked for the Playboy Club but she also came out of the punk scene and she was a regular at CBGB so it was that combination of like real like high glamour plus real like quite tough edginess and that's what I think Urban Decay really embodied and why Robert and his, um, and his colleagues were so intimidated by going in the shop the reason why I'm making this video today is because um, a couple of weeks ago I went out and I saw my friends and we started chatting about makeup and I partly I wanted to mention that because it's evidence that I actually do go out sometimes and I do have friends and I don't spend all my time watching YouTube and watching cartoons. I mean, yeah, I, I really don't. I, mean, I spend a lot of the time doing that, but not all my time. Um, and so, and what happened was she she was talking, we're chatting about um, makeup. And um, she said to me, you know, the um, the Urban Decay UK website has stopped doing sales, like, as of, like, you know, yesterday. And I said, what does that mean? She goes, well, I don't know what that means, but, you know, that sounds like the rot's setting in with that brand. It's like, are they going to stop selling it entirely in the UK? And, you know, and so I went away and thought about it, and I looked at the website, and I just saw that there was a notification on there that the website was closing down. And I thought, yeah, that, that sounds pretty bad. Um, so what did I do? I got on Twitter and I tweeted Urban Decay to see if they could, if they had a response to like these, um, this query. They didn't get back to me. 
Um, I went on, you know, I thought I'll go on the website and see if there's any sort of customer service, like I can contact. I sent an email to them asking about this, you know, this quite serious concern I've got. I got a reply from them from what looked like a bot saying that we're going to still be selling makeup via our stockists. It's just we're not using the website anymore. However, I'm, I'm still seriously like concerned um the tweet i sent them has just been left hanging for like at this point about a week now so i don't i'm not aside from the communication from the bot i'm not really too sure what's going on at the moment um i had a look on um you know to see can you still buy urban decay products in the uk and actually you can they are uh, saw um, on various sort of um cosmetics websites you can sell them they're in with all their other products but it's still, it seems quite bad. Why? And also, I'm like, why would you close down your own website? What, you know, it just feels quite strange. So I've just, so I've, went, well, I've been thinking about it and, um, you know, and I've come up with a few theories as to what might be going on there. I've always been a big fan, well, for a very long time, I've been a fan of, Urban Decay's makeup palettes. Um, I've got a few just to show you as evidence. That's uh, one from a few years ago, and um, these are the ones I've been using at the moment. You see, I've got two of them. You know, I'm quite a fan. Um, when I was, um, I, I did some digging around because at one stage um, I used to buy an Urban Decay eyeshadow palette every year, and I found this is the oldest one that I managed to find. And so, as you can see, like how busted that is. I mean, it's like it's all like I've lost the uh, mirror off of it. Um, some of the colours obviously really light, and I use some of them not so much. And um, you know, I learned recently as well. You're only supposed to keep eyeshadow for like two years. Um, I don't wear this still. It's just that I've probably got a bit of a hoarding problem. I don't know. But um, you can see that I have. You know, this is really old. It, it's way over ten years old. This, and it just shows how like you know how much I care about the brand. The fact I used it so much, and the fact it's still. Um, I've still got it in my possession. I mean, and um, and looking at it, it's sort of I can see the um, the appeal of why I liked it, like Urban Decay as a brand so much. Um, it's like looking at the names of the um, of the of the um, shades, like there's one called Blackout there, um, there's one called Smog, um, there's one called Tornado, and so if you look look back to what I've just said about Debbie Harry and how it's just some being like really like punky and grungy I just love the fact that though that the, that the makeup shades had these sort of really quite tough colours. Urban Decay was um, founded in 1996 by um, tech entrepreneur Sandy Lerner. Um, Sandy was very much um, a Silicon Valley person you know she created um a, well, along with her uh, partner she created a router that was you know that was you know a really revolutionary piece of technology and then she went on to um create this makeup brand um and what the tagline for urban decay with the initial that they, that they were running with was the phrase does pink make you puke and um, I'll, I'll, there'll be a link to this as well, but I read an interview with her where she talked about how she hated the way so many makeup brands um, were just wanted everyone to look like Barbie and they wanted everything to be pink and sweet. And she just wanted to come along and do like, you know, sort of really gritty urban makeup brand. And that's the one that I discovered and I fell in love with. Um, over the years, um, I actually, they, they have evolved over the years, Urban Decay, because, and we'll, we'll go back to um, Robert Welsh, because I really, it's, I really disagree with him over this, that they made the radical decision to make um, a palette called Naked, which included all like muted shades, and, um, and, and this, let's hear from Robert to hear what he thinks about that. So of course you can't talk about Urban Decay and not talk about their naked palettes. This was the thing for them. These palettes were emulated by other brands, trying to copy them, trying to do dupes, you know? Even to this day, even to this day. I really didn't like Naked. I actually have one of the Naked palettes somewhere, but um, in contrast to the one that I've got like with me now. I, I bought it, I um, used it for a bit. Um, and I remember um, one day, I mean, I'm one of those um, terrible people who likes to put makeup on, on on public transport. I mean, I'm a Londoner and I used to commute. Um, I, you know, I work from home most of the time now, but, you know, the commute's a boring time. So I used to use my time to put on makeup. And I remember I was on the tube one day and I was going somewhere after work and I, I had the naked palette and I was sat next to a lady and she said, I'm a makeup artist don't ever use those shades again because um browns and creams and stuff they're not they, they're not 
flattering they'll just make you look a lot older than you when you actually are and I thought well I'm old enough already I don't want to look out any older than needs to be and I stopped using it I was always a bit uh, you know a bit up in the air about um, naked anyway because I you know the fact the thing that I really loved about Urban Decay was these really like strong pigments and the fact they had these sort of really quite aggressive um like names I wasn't too sure about naked so but the thing is though is what that showed to me is that Urban Decay weren't frightened at that point of actually alienated their core um, the core consumers and um, me being one of them and and actually it worked out really well um, if you look at like Robert's video he talks about how iconic like naked actually was but even at the point of naked there was a sort of peak Urban Decay happening because what happens was that um it was so successful and then they kept copying in it i think they got up to about naked three they kept releasing very similar palettes and now there's um and for well, quite a long time there's been na naked palettes that look more similar to the palettes like like this one they include like you know vibrant like purples and vibrant greens and metallics and it's like how are they naked exactly it just doesn't make sense and apparently according to robert it actually angered quite a lot of people in the makeup community However, they've kind of entered this time period of um, disappointing everyone. Here's why, right? Naked Palette, that kind of like section, subsection of their brand, they're still doing these Naked Palette releases, right? And they start to release like this, this chain of Naked Palettes that the general feedback was this doesn't make sense for it to be a Naked Palette or in the Naked range. It's just a regular eyeshadow palette. And people are kind of getting like a little bit bored, but also like a little bit offended. And here's what I mean by offended. Ended, okay they were kind of like you're ruining you're ruining naked palettes you're ruining like the naked thing like bring out new palettes but you don't have to call them naked all the time but what um urban decay has been very good at doing is even though there was a massive sort of slide over the naked thing um they actually have been very good at recruiting um brands ambassadors um to represent like their um, their makeup line and uh, a particular high spot of that in in my opinion was I remember Ruby Rose being a, a makeup, you know, being a brand ambassador for them. And um, this was at the height of her um, fame in Orange is the New Black. And I actually remember that happening. And I remember thinking, oh, that's really quite cool. Because um, the thing with, um, like, Ruby Rose, um, she was like, I mean, if you watch Orange is the New Black, she was um, the character, she played the character that came in to split up, like, um, Alex and um, and uh, Piper Chapman. And so she was a real, like, sort of a uh, chaos engine. And obviously that was such a big role. You'd have to get somebody pretty impressive to, to um, play that part and Ruby Rose really was I mean and um it like to go back to what I said about um Debbie Harry earlier that Ruby Rose, Ruby Rose she's um a very deeply conventionally attractive model but she's also got like you know loads of tattoos and she looks hard and the fact she played a character in a women's prison she really represents what in my opinion are the, the core values of urban decay however there was a, quite a sad moment though when I was, you know, when I was looking at Twitter to see um, if I'd got any response from Urban Decay to my question. And I was looking at the hashtag Urban Decay and see if anyone else was tweeting about it. And um, I felt, wow, I thought, uh, you know, and this is what really made me want to make this video. I spend a lot of time on YouTube and so naturally the whole Bud Light um, saga involving Dylan's work as their brand ambassador and then and how she managed to, like, her endorse, why her endorsement actually managed to lose the, like, um, Anne House of Bush, like, a lot of money. I, it, it did not pass me by. I, um, I remember I've, just after I left university, I worked as a telemarketer. And uh, my um, line manager told me a story about, there was a jeweller's firm called H. Samuels in the UK. And um, their, um, like, their, their um, like, chief executive had been given a speech and he said oh we sell all our products so like at such a cheap rate because they're all c and then it meant that it was it all like they just lost so much money because people didn't want to buy the products because um because of what he said and I remember like because I'm quite a mean spirit person I just remember being quite fascinated by that story I just find it I find it really like you know it, it, you know, it's just, it's not so much about me, but I just really like the story. So when the sort of Dylan and Anne House of Bush and Bud Light story, like saga was playing out, I was naturally like pretty fascinated by it. And um, and so what happened was when 
I was searching for um, like Urban Decay hashtags, I can't believe my eyes. I actually saw old. Right, I don't, I've never wanted to have any, any negativity on this channel, it's not really my jam and I just don't want to do that. However, I'm, I'm going to be negative now and if I get grief for it, um, I'm, I'm just going to take it. I mean, this is just my view. But um, I searched hashtag Urban Decay and then I saw, then I thought, oh, who have they got like, representing them today? And I'll call it like, my jaw drops and it's like, oh, we've got the, like, the anti-influencer is probably the best way to describe it. Like, Dylan, um, that sponsorship, lost that brand, like, billions, like, and, uh, and then, then, like, a few weeks later, she won a streamy, like, for, um, like, you know, like, it's like, how can, isn't that, like, a massive failure as an influencer of the brand that you're working for, um, like, loses, <laughs> loses money, and then also, I actually looked at what Dylan had done, um, for, um, for, like, to be, um, to be a brand ambassador for this deeply loved brand and it was um this really basic like glow up sort of dance which is uh, don't do glow up stuff right it, like I'm, I'm kind of tired of people like, it, well everyone's been tired of it for a long time but um it's like um if you're a, a cosplayer or something and you want to go from oh yeah this is what i am um, look like in my day-to-day -day life and here's me in cosplay beautiful that's fine but that oh, this is me looking like crap, oh, this is me looking gorgeous. It's been done, it's been done, it's been done, it's basic. I've even seen Dylan do it before, and it was just it was just awful, and I thought, oh, great, there we go, that's it. So that's what Urban Decay has become now. It's gone from Ruby Rose at the peak of her fame to Dylan on a down curve, doing an old-fashioned TikTok trend. And so, you know, and so what, what, what can we say now? I'm, I'm so I'm going to have to calm down a bit before I carry on. So to sum up, um, is is um, is urban decay in the process of a slow rot? I don't know. I certainly hope not. Um, it's, it's, things that are not looking good right at this moment. Um, and, and also, I don't think it's right to um, like just to complain about something and not suggest any remedies. I don't think anyone from urban decay will actually see this video, but in the off chance that they do. Um, just think, I thought, how could you do things differently rather than employing Dylan, right? I'm sure, like, Dylan is currently signed to a top agency, um, so she must be charging a lot of money to do, like, that brilliant <laughs> that TikTok dancing. All right, let's stop, right? She must have charged a lot to do that, right? How about, instead of doing that, just look at various sort of you know, makeup influencers who are all over Instagram, they're all over YouTube, I'm sure they're all over TikTok too, I never go on TikTok, but I'm sure there's plenty of them, and offer them, like, recruit hundreds of them, and give them uh, a fraction of what you paid to tell them, and say, make a cool piece of content to represent our brand. There we go. Problem solved. And um, I think I still have hope for Urban Decay. Um, I really, I, th I really still respect the um, the ethos of the brands. I still respect the look of it. Um, there's been a slight decline in quality, and there's a few people, makeup artists of it, who um, I read about. Her, you know, I was researching the video like complaints about there is a bit of a decline in pigment quality. But ultimately, you can you can improve that, and you certainly can improve your image. But right now, having closing down a website. Employing as has been as your um, as your brand's ambassador, not good. So please stop the slow rot and bring back the open decay that we all know and love. So this is the end of my video. Please like, share, and subscribe because we're a small channel and it really, really helps. So please do me a solid, and I'll see you in the next video.